Okay, let me go over some uh, homework problems from section 5.5. This section is on integrals of exponentials, uh, base A. Uh, so look at 63. Uh, if you see this, hopefully you can recognize that this is in the form of A to the U, A being base 5. So if we let the U value be negative X squared, uh, we can find the derivative with respect to X. So DU over DX equals negative 2X. Solve for dx, and we get du over negative 2x. We make our substitutions. For the exponent, negative x squared gets replaced with u. dx gets replaced with du over negative 2x. The x's conveniently cancel out. Make sure that we keep track of the negative 2. Pull the negative 1 half out. So now we have a rule for a to the u, which is simply 1 over natural log of a times the original function a to the u plus c. So that's exactly what we have here. And we can just combine this all to be one fraction and replace our u value back in terms of the original variable x. All right, 65. All right, in this case, um, we're not going to be able to let the u value be just the 2x. Because if you look at what results, we would be left with 3 to the u over 1 plus 3 to the u. And we don't have a rule for a to the u over 1 plus a to the u. So we're going to have to uh, think about a more broader um, assignment for u. And usually, if you have to choose between numerator and denominator, um, your denominator will be the better choice, simply because that will, uh, um, the numerator value is easier to cancel out with the derivative. So let's try with the u value being the denominator, 1 plus 3 to the 2x. Our derivative, 1 goes to 0. 3 to the 2x, okay, let's recall our derivative rule for a to the u, which is natural log of a times a to the u times u prime. So natural log of 3 times the original function, 3 to the 2x, times the exponent's derivative. So 2x becomes 2. So now, Solve for dx. dx equals du over 2 natural log of 3 times 3 to the 2x. We make our substitutions. Denominator gets replaced with u. dx gets replaced with du over 2 ln of 3 times 3 to the 2x. The 3 to the 2x will cancel out nicely. It's okay to have this 2 natural log of 3. Remember, we talked about how natural log of a is a, is a constant, is a coefficient. So um, this is not going to prevent our problem from... Um, from continuing. So we just have to pull this in front. This is not a variable. We should pull this in front as 1 over 2 natural log of 3. So we're going to treat natural log of a the same way that we would with any other coefficient constant. We're just going to pull this in front and keep track of it. All right, so now the integral of 1 over u is simply natural log of u, at natural log of the absolute value of u. So we have our antiderivative. Replace u back in terms of our original assignment, 1 plus 3 to the 2x. So now we can leave it in this form or write it as one fraction with the 2 natural log of 3 in the denominator and then plus c. Okay, let's look at 66. Integral of 2 to the sine x times cosine of x dx. Now here we can see that this is in the form of a to the u. If we let the u value be sine of x, then we should be able to cancel out uh, with the cosine. So we let the u value be sine of x. Derivative is cosine. dx is du over cosine. Make our substitutions. Sine x gets replaced with u. Uh, cosine x will stay for now. dx gets replaced with du over cosine of x. The cosine of x cancels out, leaving us with the integral of 2 to the u times du. Okay. And then once we have that, then we can apply the rule for a to the u, which is simply 1 over natural log of a times a to the u plus c. So that's what we have here. And now we can just put this um, as one fraction and replace our exponent, our um, u value, back in terms of x. So we have 2 to the sine x over natural log of 2 plus c. Okay. Let's look at some other problems here. Let's look at 68. This is a definite integral problem. 
So uh, this is already in the form of a to the u. So we're going to see that the, uh, the exponent will simply be our u value. u is equal to 1 half x. So the derivative of 1 half x will simply be just 1 half. Solve for dx. dx equals 2 times du. Make our substitutions. Integral of 4 to the u times 2 du. Okay. And because we're going through u substitution, and this is a definite integral, we also want to convert our upper and lower bounds to be in terms of u. So we have our conversion with u is equal to x over 2. So our initial lower bound was negative 2. So we're going to plug negative 2 in for x. So u is equal to negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So our new lower bound is negative 1. Our old upper bound is 2. So plug 2 in for x with the u, um, with the u equals x over 2. So 2 over 2 is equal to 1, so our new upper bound is a positive 1. Okay, so now let's go through our antiderivative. Integral of a to the u is simply 1 over ln of a times a to the u. So that's what we have here. 2 is the coefficient, 1 over natural log of a, our a is 4, times the original function, 4 to the u. We found the antiderivative, so we can now uh, evaluate between our upper and lower bounds. Plug the upper bound in first. 2 over natural log of 4, I combine these two as one fraction, 2 over natural log of 4 times 4 to the first power, minus 2 over natural log of 4 times 4 to the negative 1, I'm just plugging the lower bound in for u, and I'm just going to try and simplify. Um, these are coefficients that are the same, I can pull those out and just combine uh, the 4 minus 4 to the negative 1, or think of it as 4 minus 1 fourth, Okay, which is 15 fourths, and we just simplify here. Uh, the fours cancel out, the four and the two cancel out, leaving us with 15 over two, natural log of four. Uh, the back of the book has, um, has it simplifying even further, going through uh, the, power, um, um, uh, the power property for natural log, which allows us to rewrite uh, re this four as two squared, and then this two can come in front as 4 natural log of 2, so um, you don't have to simplify all the ways through this, but uh, this is just a um, progression in, in case this was a multiple choice problem, you'll see you'll be able to match it up. Okay, number 70, we have a definite integral of um, 6 to the x minus 2 to the x. Now this is already in the form of a to the u, but we don't have to go through u substitution because that's, that's only x, so the integral of uh, 6 to the x is simply 1 over ln of 6 times 6 to the x, or 6 to the x over na natural log of 6, minus a to the u over ln of a. So we've already found the definite integral. Uh, we've already found um, the antiderivative. No need for u substitution, so our bounds will stay uh, the same. Plug the upper bound in first, in for x. So 6 to the e over natural log of 6, minus 2 to the e minus over natural log of 2, minus, now plug in the lower bound, plug 1 in for x, and uh, we can't really simplify any further, so we're going to just write these all out as separate terms. Okay, finally, 71. Find uh, the area of the region bounded by, so we have y is equal to 3 to the x, y equals 0, 0, and 3. So that's simply going to be this region here, okay, between the curve and the x-axis, and then vertically between our bounds 0 and 3. So we can just convert this uh, in the notation. Okay. So integral of 3 to the x from 0 to 3. Integral of a to the x is simply a to the x over ln of a. So we've already found the integral. No need for u substitution. So we're going to keep the bounds the same. Plug the upper bound in first. We get 3 cubed over ln of 3, minus, now plug in the lower bound, 3 to the 0 over ln of 3. So we simply get 27 over ln of 3, minus 1 over ln of 3. These are both common denominators. We can uh, combine the terms up top, 27 minus 1, so 26 over natural log of 3.